Hello, my name is Mary Panfilova. I'm a 3D character artist for games and movies. In this part of the tutorial, we will create basic scene for the render using Maya and Redshift. We already have our model done and textures. Our model already have UVs. I used UDIM approach to make UVs, so each map have its own tile, and we are going to use that. The model itself was exported from ZBrush, so just first subdivision of each subtool I exported into Maya. So what I need to do is to go to Z plugin, put it here, select multi-map exporter and bake displacement map. Select displacement, uh, pick subtools here because I need to export each subtool as its own map. The map size I select 8K, as the same as many textures that I made. In file names I uh, select here tile format is UDIM and by that it will create different and correct name for the files of maps. My displacement setting will be looking like that. I turn on smooth UVs. 32-bit XR, scale is 1, intensity is 0, mid value is, uh, will be 0. Let's try to bake. In my project folder I create new folder and call it My project is called audience textures. The process of baking is pretty fast, especially if you turn off adaptive, it will be really fast and adaptive makes a, bakes a better quality but slower. I usually don't turn on adaptive. Baking is finished and I need to rename each one. I give some simple name, audience disp by displacement and uh, I need to keep this last four numbers that ZBrush created. 1012, uh, 1001, so this number I do need to use. So copy this part of the name and paste it to each one, keeping the individual number. Once we are done with displacement, we go to Substance. The textures are finished. We go to File, Export Textures. And what we need to do here. By default, the size of the texture is set by the size here. So if we set the size here 2048, the same size it will offer us to export. What I want to do is double each size. The main tiles that are most important is the head, the arms, the legs, the dress, and uh, this clothes. This big texture sets I want to export as 8K texture. There are some textures that are temporary and I don't need a big size for them. This hair can be a minimum size and this and for the eyes for example it can be much lesser size so I decide depending on texture type what size I export it and set the size in each section. I select the path same as where we baked displacement. Uh, PNG is ok, uh, let's go to settings and I will create a new preset. So what textures do we need? We need the first one is I select RGB and pick 
base color and name it audience I can call it div or albedo alp for udim number we have it here in a texture set list so I select texture set and it will add udim number accordingly to texture set name same thing I do for roughness just replace the type of the texture to rough in our project we don't have any metal but just in case I will export if you have on your project metallic textures so it's more like a standard set for redshift also for the skin we have scattering so need to add that and the last texture that we need is height I call it pump so as you can see all textures are standard there is no converted map I choose my preset from the list and that's it I'm ready to export it I should also add that this 8k export takes a lot of time to do I think it's the most slow process within all my pipeline I pretty quickly export in and import everything the mesh, the displacement, normals and stuff and render is pretty fast now the slowest thing to me is to export the textures let's see what happens when I do that, so what does he use? He uses uh, CPU very little uh, and he uses a lot of video memory of graphic cards when he processes the exporting of textures. I guess Substance uses that heavily because it needs to convert initial maps to double size and it's all uh, process that involve video memory once the conversion done uh, it will use cpu in our texture folder we have both textures and displacement and the naming is uh, the same on the textures and displacement first is the project name then the type of the texture and then udim number so now we are setting up the shader uh, first i open my render settings and make sure that redshift is active if there's not in the list but I installed it, just go to Windows setting preferences, plugin manager and make sure that Redshift have a check. I can set the right size, the widescreen not the best option for this character so let's make some custom size. We can use square for now. You can switch modes here to select uh, the comfortable mode for you. I usually turn on this white frame to see the borders of my frame. I open Redshift Render View and put it on the sidebar in Maya so this way I split my screen into two parts and I can already start rendering it so I'll try to explain everything like you're doing your rendering for the first time you have two types of render one is uh, we can call it real time it's called IPR render in Maya and it updates whenever you change anything and when your settings are simple it updates really really quickly so when you set up your render you can have it always on and see what's happening uh, but when you're ready and you made your setup I stop 
IPR render and make the final render. This way it makes the final render. But for us, we just open the symbol. When I have no lights in the scene, it creates default light which look really close to viewport. Uh, but once I create my first light, I go to redshift uh, to lights and create dome light. Now it uses the only light that I create. Okay, now I want to keep this view. Let's say we are happy with the view of the camera. And I want to keep it and switch to another camera. So I go to panels, perspective and create new camera. Now I'm uh, looking from a new camera. Let's call it viewport. And it keeps rendering from this initial persp camera. It, it is here. And we can actually see it uh, on the viewport. Here, here is this camera. But we are looking now from another camera which is not rendering. So we are free to change the camera but the render will be on the same position. What I want to do is I want to match this lighting and my lighting. It's really simple to do. I uh, see what uh, environment map I'm using at the moment. I'm using Panorama and I'm going to open the same HDR into this dome light. If you want to light your scene by HDR image, usually what you do you create this dome light because the lighting will be shooting from every angle. It's the way we need to use the dome light. So I go to attribute editor. In attribute editor we have the node that have settings for the light. And here we have dome map. And here I need to select uh, this HDR from Substance. And if I go to Substance Path, it's uh, on a drive C program files wherever you installed your Substance. Algorithmic Substance Painter, Resources, Shelf, uh, Algorithmic Environments, Interior. And here you have um, HDRs. Uh, not Maybe not interior, in this case exterior. So I search for this panorama. I copy the path, paste it in Maya, and select it. Now the lighting should be the same as substance. And if we want to rotate it, we just select this dome light and make the rotation the same way. We can even try to set the same angle, just to be sure. I put environment opacity and blur off. Uh, we can set the st this little stone will be on the left side. Sa the same way I will find the stone in my. Here is the stone, so we'll be looking like that. Of course, uh, usually we don't want to see the background so let me turn it off now i go to dome light settings and i go to environment and check off enable background so now the lighting is the same but we don't see a background and in the substance i will turn it off also I want to see attribute editor and render view at the same time, so I took my window and inserted it in between. So you can switch either uh, you pull the render view here to the back, like that, or you take it and switch it in between, like that. And here will be our viewport view. For the background, I want to have something. We're making uh, now something like studio render, so there will be no environment, and I probably don't need this floor for that. Instead, I will create uh, the decent background. I like to make it from a sphere.
now the normals are looking outside I will need to reverse normal mesh display reverse Uh, now I tweaked my perspective camera accidentally. I want perspective camera to stay in the same place. And to do that, I want to have an animation key to that. I go to channel box of perspective camera, selecting that, and select all my attributes, except scale, because I don't uh, change scale to the camera. Select only these attributes, right click, Okay, selected. Uh, now, when I change the camera view, I can always switch into my timeline and the camera will return back. If I want to change this position, I move my camera any way I want. And now the case from red color became pink color. It means that this position wasn't saved and to save it I go right click and K select it again. And now switch to my viewport camera. Uh, the problem with this background is that it blocks the lighting from the HDR and we want to have it equal to substance. So this I want to go to delete history, go to shape of this mesh, go to render stats and turn off cast shadows. So now the lighting don't contact with this object. It goes through it uh, because this piece doesn't have shadows. It doesn't interfere the lighting. One more thing, when I work in Redshift, I usually close the substance. I can make a screenshot from substance just to have it as a reference. It's Windows button Shift S to make a screenshot. And I save it to my PRF. And now I can close the substance. Uh, because when I have substance on, it uses video memory and there is nothing much left for rendering. So for better performance, I need to keep only one application opened. If I push this arrow button, I will have a new menu that allows me to save this render. I hit plus and now it is stored. Uh, when I do that, it opens this mode of snapshots. So I can store more and more. Uh, but I, when I want to continue to render, I exit this snapshot mode and I will come back when I have something to compare. So to install our displacement, I need to go to each mesh to its shape node body shape in attribute user and I go to redshift and enable tessellation and displacement. If I do that the the mesh will be smoothed when we render it and it needs to be done to have a displacement applied. So I do the same thing on the all meshes that I have. Now if we make the render again, there should be some really tiny changes. Let's save this version and compare. So you see that there's something different. Here you can see it. So the mesh was divided. Uh, it's the same as you uh, subdivide the mesh two times in Z ZBrush or more times. The number of divides you can set here. It says now that the maximum amount of subdivision is six, but it doesn't divide it all the time only if uh, the render understands that it's need to be divided that much. Uh, for example, is the mesh is 
uh, away from the camera if I render it like that. Then it won't be divided six times because there is no need to do that, there is no information uh, that it can take from this subdivide. But if we look really really closely, uh, so the render divided will divide it more. So I select all materials and right click, holding right click and go to assign new material. I go to red shift up and select red shift material. It is the main material that we use for nearly everything. By default it looks like that. Now we're inserting the textures. I go to diffuse. I hit the checkerboard, uh, select file, here I select the path of the texture and select albedo. It doesn't matter what number you choose, it takes some time to process the texture. But once it's on the memory, uh, then it will be fast. So. Loading the textures into the render takes time, but only for the first time you do the render and then it will be fast. Um, but now the problem is we only have the first texture that we made everywhere. We need to replace this number by the word UDIM. Or you can just go to UDIM Tiling mode and turn it on, UDIM Mari, and it will do it for you. It might took the number and replace it with this word. So you can do it by yourself or select it here. And it says us that um, it found 14 tiles. It means that everything should work fine. Uh, let's renew the render. Sometimes some operations doesn't refresh when we have the render on. And sometimes I need to stop it and renew it again. And uh, now it says us that um, at the moment it's processing the textures. So you can always see what's happening exactly at the moment. So the textures was installed. I go to the next stack, it, it is roughness, I go to roughness checkerboard, file, and do the same thing with roughness. But now the textures doesn't look like in the substance, everything is glossier than in the substance. It is because we need to change the roughness uh, color space to row. It's just a thing that you need to remember when you use black and white maps in Maya for render. sRGB is working for color maps. It's default for color maps, but for black and white maps it needs to be switched to the row. And now the Roughness is correct. The next one will be metalness. I switch Fresnel type to metalness. And in this stack, metalness, I select my maps. Uh, the problem with them is that all of them are black. And I can install it, but there is no point to do that. Uh, we have some metalness information on the clause. Um, by default, it, the material from source had the metalness. Let's just do that, so make sure that it will work. Now it looks metallic, because we turned on metalness, but once we installed the texture, and I will switch it to RAW as well. Not sure if I need to switch metalness to RAW, but I hope I do. And also this slider of reflectivity, by default, I think it makes reflections quite light. So I usually decrease it, but I'm not sure if I need to do that now. We can try to keep it at first and see. 
later. Uh, many people recommend to switch BRDF to GGX. Then I go to subsurface and uh, let's skip it at now. We will, we will go to this later. Uh, let's go to overall. And here we, I need to install bump map. Go to checkerboard, file, select file. It create bump map node with uh, default height scale by 0, 0, 001. It's the low value for substance bump. I would start from 1 and go here. So the file of bump will be here and select the bump map. Same way I'm switching to Udim. It wasn't very wise that I forgot to finish displacement installment and started to install textures. But let's do it now. I go to material and select this arrow key. And by that I'm going from my material to shading group. It's another node that is being used for shader settings. And our material is uh, applied to surface material. Here is where we need to install displacement. I go to checkerboard, select file, uh, it creates displacement node that by default is scale 1, there is no settings I need to change here, I just go to displacement here and insert the displacement file. Ok, now it's look weird, but just for a time. When I inserted the file and select UDM again, takes a bit more time to process new textures. And now displacement is working. In ideal situation, the sculpture now, the mesh, should look exactly like in ZBrush because we have quite a dense mesh and plus we have displacement map that compensate all details from ZBrush that we sculpted. It should work better than normal map that we usually have for games, but displacement map is not a perfect map and sometimes you lose uh, some details from ZBrush anyway. You can go really really closely to some close-up area and check how similar it looks to ZBrush or maybe you miss something. Actually it's better to check on an empty shader without everything without bump map. Just for a time I will see. And uh, what you see here, you can check your displacement this way. Mm. I'm not worried that I will lose something because uh, my wireframe is dense and the texture size is big, so I think it uh, everything is fine. This mesh is probably not that good looking, not as in ZBrush, but I'm not worried about this mesh. It won't. Uh, we see some problems actually with this mesh. We see this weird state uh, looks like it uh, haven't subdivided enough or the texture resolution uh, isn't good, good enough. So if you have some problems uh, with your displacement, if it doesn't look good enough comparing to ZBrush, the things that you need to check is texture resolution at first, uh, is your texture resolution is good enough. So one, one thing that you can do is to increase resolution of the displacement texture. Probably you will need to map your character differently, make more UDIMs than it was before. Another thing you can do is uh, to just check your UV. Sometimes uh, UV is done not right and there will be some stretching uh, after smoothing. Just enough dense mesh also really really helps. And if you don't want to change your mesh, instead you can just 
uh, delete first subdivision in ZBrush and export second subdivision and work with that. Uh, there is another way how you can improve it in settings of each mesh where we enable tessellation and displacement. There is a minimal edge length and by default it's 4. This is the algorithm how the Redshift see when it needs to subdivide more or less. And the less number you make, the better quality will be. So I can store this view and try to decrease the number to 2 and repeat uh, render again. I predict that nothing much will change, but, but sometimes it really helps to improve the quality. Of course, the lesser number is, the more time it takes to render. So be careful when you change settings like that, how to increase your rendering time. So store this view and compare. Okay, I see a little bit difference if you see at the nose when I uh, switched it to 2 it looks like it improved the geometry here but the changes is so small that I wouldn't bother to reduce the number maybe I can switch it into 3 and it will be a good compromise in between but in some cases I really noticed that force definitely wasn't enough when the density of the wireframe was uh, much lower I definitely needed to decrease this value so something in between 1 and 4 I think should be fine so now we have all textures installed I will adjust uh, the background a little create new material for the background and select redshift material and select some darker color with no reflection and now I want to increase the frame size up to 3000 pixels and make the final render and compare it with substance and see how similar or different it is To make a render like that with displacement and texture takes 17 seconds, which is so far good. So let's compare. I take the render view to the full window and save the view just in case. Let's compare it with the original. So here is the original image from the substance. And here is the um, textures installed to the Redshift. And as from what I see, for me it's pretty the same. Uh, the colors are the same, the roughness values is also feels okay. I guess everything is fine. Obviously there's uh, resolution uh, of the textures gives a better result, more detailed. But of course it's not finished lighting and shading work, we just started. On the next lesson I'm going to tweak the shaders, set up the subsurface scattering and do lighting effects and show you how I finished uh, my work uh, by adding the environment. Thank you for watching and see you on the next lesson.